every heart, every heart that is broken. Oh, yeah, we're announcing His freedom. We're announcing His freedom. All things made new. All things made new in this place. There's a God and His living, breathing, healing. The Spirit of the Lord. The Spirit of the Lord. The Spirit of the Lord. Welcome to Every Nation Sunning Hill. We would love to give you a warm welcome. 
thank you for giving your tithes and offerings at this time. Join us in prayer every Thursday as we ask God to stop the spread of the COVID-19 virus. Welcome to Every Nation Sending Here online service. If you're a first time visitor, we'd love to give you an extra warm welcome. We would also love to connect with you. There will be a link in the comment section. Our host will put it on there. If you press that, it will take you to the connection card. Please fill that in because we would love to connect with you. If you are on the website, it will be up above. And we would also love if you would like and subscribe. A very good morning to you. Welcome to Every Nation Sunning Hill on online service. My name is Pastor Jude Kaganda and I am one of the pastors who serves at Every Nation Sunning Hill and we are very happy to have you here. For those who are joining us for the first time, please make sure that you, you click. There's a link at the bottom of the screen uh, that, uh, that's basically a connection card that will tell us more about who you are and if you have any questions that you'd like for us uh, to answer or you want to connect more at a deeper level, uh, please click that connect link. There will be a prayer link as well throughout the sermon uh, uh, on different parts of the screen and you are more than welcome, please, to click that so we can get to know more about you and you can get to know more about us. Like I said, welcome to Every Nation Sunning Hill. And our vision here at Every Nation Sunning Hill is that we see lives, communities, and society transformed through discipleship in the word and the presence and the power of God. So welcome to our online service. And we've been doing a, quite a, a, a series in these last couple of weeks. And we're happy that you, if you'd be joining us for the first time, uh, we welcome you again. This is a, a great time as well to catch it. Uh, uh, even the videos that we've been uh, posting up, whether it be on the website or YouTube or Facebook, we ask you that uh, you can just click onto those uh, so you can just catch up and see what we've been going through in the last uh, uh, couple of weeks. But the series that we've been doubling into is a time like this. Um, and last week we had Pastor Obi and Pastor Maputi um, um, tackle a very brilliant topic and well communicated as well. And we were talking about basically how, what, what we can do in this time of uncertainty. Um, uh, what, what, there's a lot of what's being expected of us, but uh, in terms of uh, uh, God's purpose for our lives, what should we be doing? And I just want to take a few minutes just to recap as well on what uh, uh, they touched on. And they started us, they started us, uh, with their with their uh, um, topic saying in a time like this you are inquire you inquiring basically you inquiring you inquiring to God what you should do you inquiring of God as well what's expected of you in this time um, you cry out to the Lord number one you cry out to the Lord number two God speaks and just let's talk about just the hearing God's voice hearing God or how to hear God's voice in this uncertain time. Number three would be make room for God as well. Make room for God in this time. It's easy for us to get caught up and, and, and just simply react, react to everything being thrown at us and not make room for what God, uh, God's will and what he intends for you to be doing in this time. And number four would be continue seeking God. And number five would be take action. And that's what they touched on last week. And uh, this Sunday, I have the pleasure this Sunday, I have the pleasure of just dabbling a bit deeper into, uh, um, into the series as we as we go along, and we've we've been in a basically a mist of change right now. Yeah, every society in the world has been affected by what's been going on. Uh, it doesn't matter which part of the world you're you're in, but uh, your normal has been changed, um, and so, and I guess to our detriment, whether we like it or not. What we used to think things are, are very much different to what they are now. How we interact with people, um, how we do our work, how we go to our day-to-day -day jobs. Um, if we still can go to our day-to-day -day jobs, most of us have been working from home and uh, under various lockdowns, depending on which part of the world you're in. Um, but we've had to really adjust to the change that has taken place. And the big thing about this is change. Change is a very difficult 
very difficult thing to go through and i think what's very particular and what's very uh, i guess more stressful about this kind of change is that it it it, it was forced upon us we didn't see it coming um, and we've had to adjust our lives uh, uh, to accommodate it whether we like it or not and and the reason why i guess we're more motivated to do this is is because well our health is at risk and normally when when change occurs and 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 your health is at risk you would do whatever you need to do to make sure you adapt um and i guess that's the that's the frustration we've been feeling is that we we never got a chance we never got a chance to to give our opinion about what we would like and and it's very rare that change gives you that opportunity and as we struggle through this i know that god has a plan for each and every one of us and um and i'd like us this morning to just look with a vision of what, of what god sees for us uh, in the midst of change now as you go through change uh there are certain things that you re- that you that you realize um when uh, when change is brought about in your life um a lot of the things uh, uh we'll start with number 1 what you might have placed an identity on something that is passing um, um and now that you realize that that's been questioned the other thing as well you might be slowly killing something uh, um you might be slowly killing something um that's meant to bring you back to life um the other the other contradiction of this is that uh, um a, a lot of times uh, the these type of tense times also reveal to us that maybe there are things in our life that we are spraying uh, uh they sort of like a corpse you're spraying perfume over it to make it smell good but it's something that actually uh, died long ago on the other flip of the coin as well it could be it could be what uh, you could be one of those people who you are consistently or constantly attending a memorial service for your gifts and talents um because you don't want to step out out the boat and do what God has called you to do um in essence we in essence you are holding on to something you should let go uh or on the other side of the coin is that you are you are pushing down talents and gifts and and what God has called you to do and you choosing not to live out the true call of God on your life. So it's always one of those two things flowing at parallel to each other. And nothing brings them out or nothing kind of grinds uh, uh, uh grinds and puts tension in them uh, uh like unforeseen change. In other words, um if I had to just break it down I guess in 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 one line um and ask you the question um what Are there things in your life are you trying to resurrect something in your life that God is trying to crucify um on the other side are you trying to crucify something in your life that God is trying to resurrect um change can bring about that friction and it's important for you to know what God's will for your life is at this point in time um especially with the with, with frustration and tension that is created by where we are at right now and i mean personally i'm also uh, 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 uh struggling with that tension as well i've 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 had to do kind of a, an, an audit of my own life <laughs> an audit of how i parent an audit of how uh what type of husband i am uh, uh what type of worker i am um are they are they habits and are they habits that i've allowed to slide uh, um and that i've gotten away with that that have been brought to the surface because of this tension Um, and I've had to look into that, and I can tell you my list. My list is probably as long as yours, <laughs> and I've had to re reevaluate and come back to the heart of God for what He wants for my life. And whenever we get caught in this type of uh, uh, attention, I mean, our go-to is 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 you having a conversation with God, and there are many, but there are particular questions that we ask, like God, where are you now? Um, God. I am alone. Why aren't you doing anything? Uh God, why are you silent? Um uh and I've thrown a lot of those uh, uh, at God. Um and just like you or maybe just like some of you they've been met with with pretty much silence. And and this is the thing about having a conversation. This is the thing about having a conversation. In my experience when you have a conversation uh with someone um If you have a conversation with someone and there's a there's a and it's followed by silence so either it's one of two things either that person has already spoken has already said what they needed to say uh they've already said what they needed to say to you and you've just forgotten um or they yet to say what they need to say to you um and what I need to do is just wait for their response 
Um, the one thing that either of those two, no matter what you fall into, the one main thing is both of those areas or both of those examples are going to need intentional listening. That is something we cannot get away from. Either way, we have to get into intentional listening to hear what's being said. And, and it, the, one of my favorite uh, uh, books when it comes to change, um, one of my favorite uh, passages of scripture is, is Ezekiel 37. Um, and this is a popular scripture also known as the Valley of the Dry Bones. Um, and this is, this, is, this is great for me because um, uh, you see Ezekiel basically going uh, uh, through a vision of, 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 uh, of God and he's asked to prophesy. He's in a conversation with God, basically. He's in a conversation with God and they're basically talking about uh, uh, um, um, the Valley of, the, uh, the valley of uh, Dry Bones. Can these bones come to life? Um, and this is a to and fro uh, between God and Ezekiel. And this is where I want us to pick it up. So in uh, Ezekiel chapter 37, we'll start in verse 1. It says, The hand of the Lord was on me, and he brought me out by the Spirit of the Lord and set me in the middle of the valley. It was full of bones. He led me back and forth among them, and I saw a great many bones on the floor of the valley. Bones that were very dry. He asked me, Son of man, can these bones live? I said, Sovereign Lord, you alone know. How many times have you ever been caught in a situation like that where you're asking God, like, hey, God, I don't know. Um, geez, um, yeah, it's, yeah, Jesus, it's rough. Things are, things are not looking good. Um, can they be um, resurrected? Can they be fixed, Jesus? Only you know. Uh, you hear terms like, Jesus, take the wheel. <laughs> uh, it's funny when you hear people say, Jesus, take the wheel, who don't have a driver's license. And you're like wondering, what, what's your reference? But anyway, I digress. Um, but we get caught up in that conversation. We get caught up in that, in that uh, 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 level of despair, even in the midst of God asking us, uh, can these things come to life? Lord, I don't know. Only you know. And that's where I want us to pick up uh, uh, um, this conversation. Um, with God and Ezekiel. Now, the reason why uh, uh, this in particular was strange um, um, and, and what it symbolizes is this. Bones are a reminder. The, the bones in the valley are, are basically a reminder of what used to be alive. Um, that's what they are. Those dry bones are a reminder of what, what used to be alive. And, and the difficult part, uh, 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 I guess, for Ezekiel be, being in that sort of situation is and we've all experienced this in our lives, is, is that when something, when something uh, uh, um, ceases to exist, when something dies and passes out of sight, it is more, is, it's much more easier for us to deal with it um, because it's, it's, it's not in our vicinity. It's not, uh, um, it's not in our environment. When it completely gets out of sight, it's easier to deal with. Um, um, it might even require a bit of time, but it's easier to deal with. The problem occurs... The problem occurs when something dies in front of you um, and stays there. Um, and I guess this is the difficult part here. When something dies in front of you and is still in your life. Um, for example, when, when, when the job you used to love, uh, uh, the passion for it dies, but it's something you go to every day. It could be a relationship where... Uh, with a passion or the purpose or or whatever happened in that relationship, whether it be a, a result of resentment or or conflict or unforgiveness, that that relationship dies in front of you. But every day, no matter what area you go to or where, wherever this uh, relationship is that you have with someone, uh, um, you face it every day. It's a dead relationship. Um, the breath of life has just gone out of it. It could be a business for a lot of uh, entrepreneurs out there. It could be a business that you're kind of struggling with, that, you, uh, um, that you're trying to resurrect, but nothing is happening. And, and, and it's uh, um, 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 otherwise, from all accounts, when you look at it, it's dead. But it's something that you face every day when you wake up in the morning. And, and I guess that's what makes, that's what makes uh, 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 um, um, this portion of scripture uh, uh, a bit difficult uh, to deal with. Because you see it every day. It's harder to deal with. 
and and what makes this more traumatic especially in 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 ezekiel's context what makes this uh, uh quite traumatic for him and even for us in our various uh lives is that you are surrounded um ezekiel was surrounded by things that should be alive you see so when he saw when he was walking in the valley the, the scripture says god took him to and fro uh, um, around this valley and when you're walking in a place and you just see dry bones dead it's it's traumatic because why bones you're not meant to see skeleton bones just laying down there um, why it's unnatural it, skeleton bones mean that something used to live there we're not used to seeing uh, 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 human beings in that form uh, we're not supposed to be seeing human beings in that form and that is why it was a traumatic experience because you were surrounded by something that was meant to be alive but was not alive and you see the natural order um the natural order of things as well is when you look at bones, you're not meant to you you're not meant to look at skeletal bones and that be natural. Because the na natural order of things is that skeleton bones are covered by tendons, they're covered by flesh, they're covered by um, um, and there's blood running through um, uh, uh, through them, and that's how we see that which makes up a human being. But when you see just bones by themselves, that is unnatural, and that's what made that traumatic. That's what made that traumatic. And I guess the, the, the frustration when it comes to our own lives uh, um, in this regard um, is that when you look, when you, most of, most of in, my, in my life, um, beg your pardon, in my life, a lot of the frustrations have occurred, have occurred in not the, re in not the reality of the situation. Um, the reality of the uh, of a situation can can, can be uh, can be damning. Yes, it can. It, it can uh, can be depressing. Yes, it can. But uh, I'm sure you can agree with me that in certain areas of your life, um, the frustration a lot of the times did not come in the reality of the situation, but it came in it, it came in your limitation to see what it could be. It came in your limitation to to because you know what it could be. And that's why you are frustrated by what is. You frustrate. You frustrated by what it could be. If we can even become a bit more honest, um, the frustration goes deeper when you realize that it, it's not supposed to be this way. I mean, there are many areas and times as well in my life where 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 I'll grit my teeth and I'll say it's not supposed to be like this. And the only time you'd say a statement like that is when you know what it's supposed to be like. Um, and that is the frustration as well. Um, when you walk into the valley of the, when you walk into a, a valley of, of dry bones, um, and the end prophecy of the scripture is that a vast army, in the end, a vast army rose up, uh, rose up. And and when you walk in looking for an army and you see dry bones, you you know you know that you're looking for an army. An army is not supposed to be dry bones. An army is not supposed to be desolate in some valley where there's no life. An army is meant to be vibrant. An army is meant to be purposeful. An army is meant to, 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 to be ready to initiate conflict or change in whatever purpose that has been given out uh, 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 from their orders. And that's where the frustration lies is I know what it's supposed to be, but it's not that. Um, and that's where the subtle depression kicks in. But let's, let's continue further. In verse 4, he goes on to say, Then he said to me, Prophesy. Now, this is Ezekiel. Uh, um, uh, this is God now speaking to Ezekiel. Then he said to me, Prophesy to these bones and say to them, Dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. This is what the sovereign Lord says to these bones. I will make breath enter you, and you will come to life. I will attach tendons to you and make flesh come upon you and cover you with skin. I will I will put breath in you and you will come to life. Then you will know that I am the Lord. Verse 7 continues to say, So I prophesied as I was commanded, and I was as I was prophesying, there there was a noise, a rattling sound, and the bones came together bone to bone. So an assembly and a, a sort of an assembly began to to to, to take place. Verse 8 goes uh, goes on to say, I looked and tendons and flesh appeared on them, and skin covered them, but there was no breath in them. Uh, and that, uh, I, I just want to 
dwell on that line of it, that last one. But there was no breath in them. The process of creating and the process of resurrection have this in, have this in common. And I mean, we see this in also Genesis 1, where the Spirit of the Lord hovered above the earth. Um, they have this in common, is, um, is that they both need a spoken word and the breath of life. So for resurrection to take place and for creation to take place, both require a spoken word from God, a spoken word from God or a spoken word uh, uh, from us as sons and daughters of God and the breath of life to come and breathe life into it. Verse 9 goes on to say, Then he said to me, Prophesy to the breath, prophesy, son of man, and say to it, This is what the sovereign Lord says, Come, breath. From the four winds and the breath into these, breathe into these slain that they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded me, and breath entered them. They came to life and stood up on their feet, a vast army. Then he said to me, Son of man, these bones are the people of Israel. They say our bones are dried up and our hope is gone. We are cut off. Therefore prophesy and say to them, This is what the sovereign Lord says. My people, I am going to open your graves and bring you up from them. I will bring you back to the land of Israel. Then you, my people, will know that I am the Lord when I open your graves and bring you up from them. I will put my spirit in you and you will live and I will settle in. I will settle you in your own land. Then you will know that I, the Lord, have spoken and I have done this, declares the Lord. What an amazing, what an amazing resurrection. This is what we're all trusting for, whatever, whatever area uh, uh, in your life. Uh, um, this is the type of resurrection we're trusting for. We're trusting for God to speak a word and also to breathe life into it, into what looks dead, into what's dry, to breathe life into it. Now we get to, now we get to uh, uh, um, the practicality of, 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 of this portion of scripture. Um, now, if we look at, at, at how this resurrection took place, um, I want to focus on the what, I want to focus on the how, and I want to focus on the who. So, on the what. What was, what was God's purpose? When, when God was talking to Ezekiel, what was God trying to achieve um, with this vision? What was he trying to show uh, Ezekiel? Well, the will of God for Israel. What is the will of God for Israel? And the will of God for Israel is to reconcile them back to him. That was God's will. And, that's a, and that has been God's will for all our lives. Uh, for generations past, that has still been God's will. That he reconciles us back to him. To put us into relationship with him. Number two is how. Now, how was God going to do that? How was God going to do that? Um, well, God was going to do that by breathing new life and building them up with his word. Breathing new life and building them up with his word. And lastly, who was God going to use um, or who had to play a role here? And the who is Ezekiel. Using Ezekiel to prophesy. Using Ezekiel to come along this journey with him and see what God sees. Um, so he can play a role in a preferred future of reconciling us to God. So the what is what is the will of God? That's the what is the will of God. How he was going to breathe new life, breathe new life in them, uh, um, and, also use, and also use God's word to build them up. The who? It was Ezekiel. Ezekiel played a role by prophesying. So what does that mean to us? Um, bringing it back home to us. What does that mean for me in, in the current situation that I'm in right now? Um, I guess question number one would be whenever you faced, whenever you are in a level of change, whenever uh, you, change is brought about you that creates frustration and tension in your life, um, it's easy for us to get caught up in self-preservation and basically trying to survive. But I challenge you in this point in time, um, we go back, we go back, uh, 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 to what makes us children of God, and that is, what is the will of God for us in this time? What is God's will for us in this time? Just like that, that relationship, just like that, 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 that um, journey God took with Ezekiel, what, what is God's will for us in this time? 
And I believe that God's will for us in this time is relationship and intimacy, is to draw us back to him. Because um, it's easy for us to be caught up in whatever's going on out there that, are, that uh, we create distance, distance and, and, and we begin to just drift away from the purpose of God over our lives. So what is our what? Is what is the will of God for us is for us to be in relationship and intimacy. Number two, which is our how. And how will we do this? With his word and the Holy Spirit. Just like with Ezekiel, uh, uh, God breathed, God, uh, 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 the resurrection came about uh, of those dry bones by a word being spoken. A word being spoken, not only that, but the breath of life, the Holy Spirit being breathed in. So for us, how is that going to happen to? How is that going to happen for us in this season? Is God's word. We need to get into God's word and God's Holy Spirit to guide us. So God's word, God's Holy Spirit. God's word, God's Holy Spirit. Number three, who plays a role? Number three, who plays a role? So with Ezekiel, he's the one who prophesied. What does that mean for us? The who for us is basically us putting ourselves in a position where we say, God, I know that number one, your the will for your the will your will for my life is that I be in relationship and intimacy with you. God, how do you want to do that? The how is by me dwelling on your word, me dwelling on your word, and uh, by me dwelling in the Holy Spirit and in your presence. Number three, how do I play a role? Who plays a role? Well, number I play a role, and how do I do that? I partner with the Holy Spirit for what God is doing in this season. I partner with the Holy Spirit for what God is doing in this season. Um, and just to summarize that, the will of God right now in this tough season, um, in this tension, in this change, it, 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 it is my responsibility to ask myself, what is God's will? Intimacy and relationship for me to be close to him. Number two, how, how, how can I do that? How, how does God go about doing that? By encouraging me to stay in the word and in the word and his presence, in the word and dwelling in the Holy Spirit. Number three, who plays a role? Me. I ask myself, Lord, how can I partner with what you already doing in this time? How can I partner? What, what have you been doing and what, what are you doing? Um, and, and the reason why I stress that last point is the question is not in times of trial and tribulation, in times of, of, of tenseness and change. The question is not, God, God, what must I do? God, what must I do? God, what must I do? The question is, God, what have you been doing? God, what are you doing? Number three, God, how can I partner with what you are doing? I'm telling you now, you will get a quicker response from heaven uh, um, when you ask those questions. Because why? You are partnering with the advancement of God's kingdom. You are partnering with what he is doing. Uh, we're not stuck in a corner where we're kind of trying to survive and cringe and kind of uh, 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 gather up all the scraps we can in this trying time. But we are saying, you know what, God? This is not a shock for you. God, this is not your first virus. Um, God, you've been healing from the beginning of time, way before the foundations of the earth. God, you've been doing miracles. So God, what are you doing? And how can I partner with you in this time of change to advance God's kingdom? That is the question we should be asking ourselves. So if you see yourself like Ezekiel and you are in the valley, in the valley of dry bones, um, do not despair because God brings up a conversation with us and he asks us, God, he asks us, do you think these bones can live? Do you think these bones can come to life? Um, and our question should always be, God, yes and amen. We should always prophesy. You see, when you prophesy the will of God, um, when you prophesy the will of God, things have to resurrect because that is God's word. When you prophesy the will of God, when you call and prophesy the breath of God to go into situations in your life, they will resurrect because those things are part of the will of God. You see, so it's very important for us to always ask God, what is your will for me in my life right now? What is your will for me in my life right now? And how can I put all my energy, how can I invest all that I have in making sure that I'm partnering with you to advance the kingdom? And I hope in this time, 
as trying as it may be, that our hope is not lost. There are certain things that God in your life is trying to trim away, and there are certain doors that God is opening for a new season. There are certain things that are hindering you from getting closer to the presence of God, whether it be, it could be anything. It could be a, a relationship. It could be a certain work environment. It could be, it could be anything. And there are also areas where God is opening doors um, for you to get closer to him. Um, there's, there's areas in your life where God is opening doors for you to see him. There's certain places that we've also been blocking, that we've been running from, that God is like, I want you to live your best life right now. I'm sovereign and I am in control. So I just want to encourage you in this time that let's not dive into ourselves. Let's look out and ask, God, what are you doing in our time? This came at, such, this came at a time where I am alive. So God, I know that I am fully equipped to have what I need to survive in this time. And if that's you, I just like to quickly just pray for you um, um, in this time, that you are strengthened, that you are renewed. And the most important thing, God's will comes back in front of you. God's will, I ask that the Holy Spirit brings to remembrance God's will for your life in this time. So Lord, I just thank you for your Holy Spirit. I thank you for that you're gonna bring us, uh, bring to remembrance, Lord God, what we've forgotten, Lord God. Bring to remembrance, Father God, the things you've told us in times past, Lord. Thank you, Father God. Sharpen our ears that we may hear. Sharpen our ears that we may hear, Father God. I ask that also that you'd open our eyes that we may see what you're trying to do. Thank you. In Jesus' name. Amen. And if you are out there and you kind of feel like that you, are, you, you, you don't know what God's will for your life is, you don't have a relationship with Jesus, um, that you've never, or either you had a relationship back then, but you're trying to, that you feel like you are very far from God right now. Well, I want to take this time to pray for you as well, because God has a plan for your life. Um, God has a plan to reconcile himself to you. And God wants you back in relationship. And those who don't have any relationship whatsoever with Jesus, it is your time to meet Jesus today. There is a link that we've posted, a connection link and a prayer link. I ask that you please click onto it and let us know where you are at. But I want to pray for you uh, right now. And I just want you to repeat after me, Lord Jesus, I ask you that you'd come live in my heart. I thank you for dying for me on the cross. I thank you that you have a plan for my life. I repent of my old ways. And I ask that you'd come in and be Lord and Savior of my life. Lord Jesus, I receive the new life that you've placed in me. In Jesus' name. Thank you. Amen. If you said that prayer, I want you just to click that connection link and please let us know. Let us know where you are at and how we can assist and connect and get you to connect into a spiritual family so you can grow. Um, and for the rest of us, let's, let's just keep asking. Let's just keep uh, uh, walking in confidence that our God has a plan for our lives, even in the midst of this time. Let's push in prayer. Let's push as a collective in community. Let's pray for each other and let's remind each other God's will for our lives. We are happy that you've had it. We're happy that you joined us for this online service this morning and we hope to see you soon. Um, until then, stay blessed and please feel free to reach out to us at any given point in time. We'll be happy to respond to you. Thank you so much and have a great week. Goodbye.